All right, 6.3, the jump. In a bungee jump, the height of the jumper is a function of time since the jump begins. Function h defines the height in meters of a jumper above a river t seconds since leaving the platform. Here's a graph of function h followed by five expressions or equations and five graphical features. Um, so for all of you who actually don't know what a, what a bungee jump is, it's something that uh, crazy people do because um, they want some sort of thrill. They jump off uh, some sort of bridge or cliff usually and they've got this like um, rope attached to their leg that's almost like a rubber band. So when they jump down, they come very close to hitting the ground. And then the, the, the rubber band like pulls them back up and then they fall back down and back up. And uh, you couldn't pay me to do something like that. But for some people, they will pay to have it done to them. Um, so that's what a bungee jump is for those of you who aren't aware. And uh, this graph sort of um, explains to you the, the path of um, the bungee jumpy after they take that jump. Um, so right, so um, here's the graph of that function followed by five expressions or equations and five graphical features. So um, they want us to match each description about the jump to the corresponding expression or equation and to a feature of the graph. So when they say feature of the graph, they're talking about a specific point on the graph. Sorry, that's down here. They're talking about um, a specific point in this graph down here. Um, one expression or equation does not have a matching verbal description. So one of these does not have an answer that can be found here. Its corresponding graphical feature is also not shown on the graph. So there's also nothing on the graph to show this point. Um, interpret that expression or equation in terms of the jump and in terms of the graph of the function. Record your interpretation in the last row of the table. So they're talking about this table, if you turn the page, that's page number three on the PDF. Um, this is where you can record all those answers. All right, um, okay. So if I look at my first description, um, well actually, I'm sorry, I misspoke. When they talk about feature of the graph, they're actually talking about um, these five bullet points here, which sort of describe um, a feature of this graph here. Um, so one thing actually I do want to do before I start filling out this table is they use some words that we haven't really used in this class. So I want to make sure um, that we understand what that means. So when they're talking about a dip, what they really mean is a minimum. It doesn't have to be the lowest point on the entire graph, but um, if you look at this graph, like it sort of goes up and down. So there actually are one, two, three, four different local, we call them local minimums because if you just look at like this section of the graph, that would be the minimum. If we just look at this section of the graph, that would be the minimum. This wouldn't be the minimum of the entire graph, right? This is the lowest point, but it's still considered a minimum locally, right? Like you might be the, the best basketball player in your block, but you might not say you're the best basketball player in the world. Um, a vertical intercept is uh, just the same thing as a y-intercept. Right, because vertical axis is this y-axis here. So it just means the same thing as a y-intercept. A peak, um, if you think of a peak, you, sometimes we say that mountains have peaks. So that's like a maximum. And again, um, when they're talking about the first peak in the graph, we have several peaks here, but we wouldn't call them each a maximum because clearly there's the highest point in the graph over here. Um, but it's more of like a local maximum. A horizontal intercept is uh, like an x-intercept. All right, so let's go through the descriptions. So A says the greatest height that the jumper is from the river. Well, when I hear the greatest, that makes me think of the word maximum. So they're talking about this bullet right here, maximum. All right, so which of these expressions um, would be the maximum? Well, if I look at this maximum right here, I can see that, um, let me read that again. The greatest height that the jumper is from the river, right? That would be this point right up here, h of t um, is 80, right? We don't have any point uh, higher than that. That is the highest point. Um, or I guess they could say that, um, yeah, if we're talking about the greatest, the greatest height is, then that would definitely be 80 feet. So h of t equals 80. All right, B, the height from which the jumper was jumping. 
Well, that also is sort of the maximum. Um, but this really, when we talk about where they're jumping, you know, where they're starting from, uh, that really is more referring to sort of a y-intercept or a vertical intercept, right? The starting value, the initial point. All right, so this is that initial point. So it's actually the same answer as that. But they're going to call it a vertical intercept instead of a maximum. All right, and um, if we're looking for that, the height from which they're jumping, right, that's the initial value. And we want that to be when t is zero, right? So before they even jump, that means zero seconds have passed. So h of zero would be the equation they're talking about. I personally feel like a and b could have been, you could have used either one. Um, I guess they wanted 80 because 80 is a height. Um, so I, I really feel like it could have been used either here or here. I'm not really sure why, what the difference between A and B is. They're sort of the same. Um, so if you chose to do it differently than this, I think you're, you're just as valid. You're just as correct. All right, C. The time at which the jumper reached the highest point after the first bounce. Okay, so I would call this to sort of be the first bounce. That first time they're bungee, they're bungee jumping, they hit the... Um, at the lowest point here, then the rope kind of snaps back up. Like when you extend a rubber band, it snaps back. Or let me show that with both my fingers. When you extend a rubber band, right? It sort of snaps back. Um, so that would be this point right here. And that looks like um, the first peak in the graph. So let's call that the first peak. All right, and if I look at that first peak, um, I'm looking and it looks to be at about 45. I would say that's a fair estimate. That's what, at least that's the point they have up here. I would say it's probably closer to 44 or 43, but they used 45, so that's what we're gonna use as well. All right, the lowest point that the jumper reached in the entire jump. Well, this is the lowest point in the graph right here. So if I look at that, um, that looks like it's about 10. I don't see anything up here involving 10, but it does look like it's about four seconds. So H of four right here, that's talking about four seconds. So that's probably the, um, the lowest point expression, H of four. All right, and we called that a dip in the graph, All right? That's a low point, um, a dip. We called that sort of like a local minimum. So I would say first dip for this. All right, so if I'm looking at all these, I've got h of zero. Uh, do I have h of t? I don't have h of t equals zero yet. Um, h of four we got, h of t equals 80, and h of t equals 45. All right, and we got maximum, first peak, vertical intercept, and minimum. So the only thing we didn't get would be um, the horizontal intercept or um, the x-intercept, or this h of t equals zero. So that makes sense. When y equals zero, that's right down here. So all along the x-axis, y is equal to zero. Um, so what do they want? They want me to record our interpretation for that last row. So the expression or equation for that last row would be h of t equals zero. When does y equal zero? Well, this graph never hits that x-axis, so that doesn't exist. The feature of the graph um, would be the um, horizontal intercept or x-intercept. All right, and the description of that, um, that would be when the jumper hit the ground. So that would be very unfortunate. So I'm glad that there is none of that because that would mean something very sad happened to our poor jumper. But maybe that's sort of a lesson, don't bungee jump. <laughs> well, I guess, no, never mind. Uh, <laughs> use the graph to estimate h of zero and h of four. Okay, um, cool. So let's see, h of zero, that's when x is zero. So if I'm looking at that, I would say that that looks like it's about, that looks like it's about 80 to me. I feel like it's very, very close and I see, kind of see a little bit of black right here. So I'm gonna guess 80. All right, h of four. Oh, we talked about that earlier. We said h of four looks like it's at about 10. All right, that's four seconds. So four seconds is like right about here. It looks like it's about 10. 
All right, estimate the solutions to h of t equals 45 and h of t equals zero. So they're asking for the t values now. So if I'm looking at 45 here, um, well, that's actually kind of a tricky question. Because you could argue that, that um, the height is 45 at two different points. So for this one, I would say that for one, we have it when x is equal to about, let's see if I come down here. We'll say it's about nine seconds. And then right here, that looks like it's about two seconds. So I would say two and nine seconds. So we got two different answers for that part. All right, h of t equals zero. Um, that's when y is equal to zero. Um, so again, this is sort of like, if I'm looking at this graph, um, it never hits zero. So I would say no solution. All right, are you ready for more? Uh, based on the information available, how long do you think the bungee cord is? Make an estimate um, and explain your reasoning. All right, uh, that's sort of an interesting question. Um, that's sort of like asking like how long is a rubber band, right? You could stretch a rubber band to make it longer or if you release it, it's shorter. So that's sort of an odd question. Um, but if I'm just taking a guess here, I'm looking at this graph and it looks like it's getting closer and closer and closer to some middle value here. Like you see like this, this graph is almost like constricting, like a, like a boa constrictor is, a, is a tightening around this point. And it sort of looks like it's tightening around right where um, uh, y is equal to 30. So if we say that um, y starts at 80 and ends at 30, then I would I would, gan I would I guess to say that the, the bungee cord looks like it's about um, 50 meters. Um, I mean, someone maybe would also argue, well, what was the highest point that it brought it up to initially? That looks like it's about 45 meters. So maybe someone might say, well, this would be the point where the bungee cord wasn't stretched anymore. Everything under that is sort of stretching and coming back up. I don't really know a lot about bungee cords or the, the science behind that. Maybe a physics teacher would know a little bit more about how exactly those work. Uh, it's, it's really more of a physics problem. But I would say if you were to guess like 50 meters or 35, anything like that would be pretty reasonable as long as you were able to back it up. All right, do we have any more? All right, that's it. Enjoy the rest of your day.